Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub, Diablos, names we now commonly use to refer to the devil by, an entity said to be a fallen angel sent to rule the underworld of the fiery pits of hell with an army of demons. Cast out of heaven for refusing to bow down to Yahweh, the Hebrew name for God. For centuries, this being has been accused of tempting mankind into committing heinous acts of evil, temptation, and lust, all of which directly oppose the Heavenly Father. According to religious text, Lucifer has been influencing mankind since the dawn of civilization, and many different groups have been accused of devil worship dating all the way back to the Knights Templar in the 12th century. However, it's important to note that these accusations were founded more on the basis of certain groups being evil simply by opposing the Christian church. And as we all know, evil is simply synonymous with the devil. So whilst these groups may have not been actively worshipping Lucifer, they were certainly accused of being evil, with Satan being responsible. There is however now a modern day practice that takes place called Satanism. The Church of Satan is a religious organization formed on April the 30th, 1966 by Anton LaVey. LaVey came to be known as an author, musician, and Satanist. And whilst it may sound as if this devoted party worships the devil, they in fact do not believe that an actual devil exists. Rather, they follow the principles and philosophies set out within the Satanic Bible, which we'll delve into more later. Satanism though is a very broad term and has many different meanings to many different people. It's commonly recognized as a practice that does indeed involve devil worship, summoning demons and using pentagrams alongside ritual sacrifice to appease the evil gods. And over the years, many rock and metal artists have used this to their advantage in order to shock, scare, and cleverly market their music. This also includes a fascination with witchcraft and the occult, which are often associated in turn with Satanism. The devil himself has risen amongst the ranks of popular culture in many forms, from Tom and Jerry to The Simpsons and South Park to Tenacious D. And even having an entire TV series created around the folklore itself set with a modern day twist. The devil has become part of popular culture, so naturally it would have been surprising if Satanism didn't appear in music to some degree. So where exactly did Satanism get its start within the world of music? And more importantly, how and why did it become so popular, specifically in the domain of heavy metal? Did it all start with Black Sabbath and the devil's tritone? Or did Diablos find his way into the hands of the musician far before this era? This is Lucifer Rising, the story of Satanism in heavy metal. Birmingham, England, 1968, Black Sabbath form and two years later release their debut record. Many consider Black Sabbath to be the first heavy metal band and were seen as somewhat of an occult group by many of their fans. However, despite his reputation, this came as a shock to singer Ozzy Osbourne. I couldn't believe it when I learned that people actually practiced the occult. These freaks with white makeup and black robes would come to us after our gigs and invite us to a black mass at Highgate Cemetery in London. A black mass is often associated with various satanic groups and also appeared in early Catholicism, dating back to apostolic times in the first century. So it would appear that some of the patrons of Black Sabbath shows were actually satanists, but why were they drawn to Sabbath in the first place? A group of Satanists even invited Black Sabbath to play a show at the coveted Stonehenge, to which the group refused. The very name Black Sabbath can easily denote links with the occult or at least an attempt to oppose traditional religion. The word Sabbath is by definition a day of religious observance. It's a day dedicated to practicing faith 
and worshipping whatever god you believe in. You also have the Witch's Sabbath, said to be a day for witches to gather in order to practice witchcraft and other rituals. So based on the name alone, this could have given Satanists the idea that Black Sabbath were indeed practicing some sort of witchcraft or Satanism. The band though say the name is far more innocent, taken from the Mario Bava 1965 film called Black Sabbath, where a Russian count encounters a family trying to destroy a line of vampires, which back then would still seem like a very dark and supernatural concept. Black Sabbath. So combine this with the actual music of Black Sabbath, and it's easy to see why at the time the group attracted people that practiced the occult and Satanism. Bass player Geezer Butler also says that around this period he was actually reading books related to black and white magic as it was becoming popular at the end of the hippie free love era that took hold in the 60s. It seemed people were already looking for something darker to appreciate, and we also can't skip over the fact that some of the first Black Sabbath songs talked about Satan, wizards, demons, magic, and fire. So really, Ozzy shouldn't have been that shocked about Satanists turning up to Sabbath shows. For Black Sabbath, it seems they were labeled as a group of Satanists that practice witchcraft simply because they wrote lyrics about these topics purely due to their own personal curiosity, but nevertheless, they still inadvertently linked heavy metal with Satanism from the very beginning, whether they meant to or not. This did work in their favor though, as Ozzy Osbourne recalls, the good thing about the Satanic stuff was that it gave us endless free publicity. People couldn't get enough of it. However, they certainly were not the first group to be accused of being associated with the devil himself. Blues, Chuck Berry. In the early 50s, a new wave of music was starting to sweep across America. That music was rock and roll, a genre that held roots within blues, gospel, and even country music all of which were heavily influenced by religion to an extent. Gospel itself was and still is solely a Christian brand of music, so when rock and roll came along in the early 50s, it was quickly labelled as the devil's music by many Christian groups. Rock and roll attracted a new generation, a generation that seemed to have a much more laid-back attitude when it came to traditional values. This was a new form of teen culture that focused on having fun, looking stylish, riding motorcycles and cool looking cars. Older generations though viewed this as a form of juvenile delinquency and social rebellion. Whilst Christians saw songs like I Got A Woman by Elvis Presley as overly sexual in nature, despite the lyrics being very tame at best by today's standards. So the idea of certain types of music being associated with a darker force was instilled into the minds of many modern music lovers long before heavy metal arrived. The only difference is rock and roll was simply about having fun and a little bit of rebellion, whereas metal was all about outright shock factor and refusing to abide by modern standards. It's fair to say that Black Sabbath were the first band to actually be accused of worshipping Satan, although unintentional. Many bands that followed would purposefully utilize this concept in order to oppose modern cultures of the time. There was one band before them though that was seen as potential devil worshippers. The Rolling Stones, formed in 1962, released their single Sympathy for the Devil in 1968, two years prior to Black Sabbath's debut record. The inspiration for the song was to view the devil from his own perspective, and interestingly it drew attention from devil worshippers. Despite the fact the Rolling Stones certainly didn't look like they were into the occult, they had no symbolism to suggest such an interest and were seen as more of a pop band than a rock band in many regards by many people. Even as far back as 1959, a gospel bluesgrass duo called The Lovin' Brothers released a record called Satan Is Real. Now, it clearly wasn't a record promoting any sort of devotion to the devil, 
but nonetheless, the devil had already found his way into modern music long before heavy metal. We could even travel back as far as the 18th century to a piece known as the Devil's Trill Sonata by Giuseppe Tartini, published in 1799, for an example of Satan in music long before metal. And no doubt there are many songs prior to this where Lucifer had found his name being whispered amongst the chords. As far as we're concerned though, the devil began to appear more frequently during the 60s, 70s and 80s, predominantly in modern rock and metal music. From the 60s onwards, we had songs such as Devil Is Watching You by Lightning Hopkins, Friend of the Devil by The Grateful Dead in 1970, Running With The Devil by Van Halen in 78, and Devil's Child by Judas Priest, released in 1982, to name but a few. And of course, arguably two albums that really spearheaded the link between metal and devil worship, Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast, released in 1982, and Motley Crue's Shout at the Devil, that hit the shelves in 1983, a year after. One record that precedes both of these though, that definitely needs a mention, is the record Witchcraft by a Chicago-based rock band called Coven. Coven released their debut record Witchcraft in 1969, and it's said to be the first record that marked the appearance of upside down crosses, the devil horn hand gesture, and the phrase Hail Satan within its album artwork. But it seems this album was lost to the ether and didn't get much attention. The title track of this LP was even called Black Sabbath, with other songs such as Satanic Mass, Packed with Lucifer, and Dignitaries of Hell. So whilst the 60s and 70s offered a glimpse of Satan to come, it would be metal in the 80s that would really set the world on fire. In 1981, English extreme metal band Venom released their debut record, Welcome to Hell. And if the title alone wasn't enough to incite fears of devil worship, the album cover itself featured the use of an inverted pentagram and what appears to be a depiction of the Sabbatic Goat, also known as Baphomet. Venom formed in 1978 and are considered to be a prominent influence of thrash music and extreme metal in general that some say led to the black metal movements across the UK and Scandinavia. Welcome to Hell also appears to be the first known record, within metal at least, to directly use the symbol of the pentagram on its front cover, displaying it so confidently. The pentagram has played an important role in linking metal music with Satanism over the years and for good reason. The traditional pentagram with its main point facing north has made appearances throughout history with a variety of meanings. Early pentagrams have been discovered on Sumerian pottery dating back to 3500 BC, where they're thought to symbolize ancient gods of love and war. Pentagrams were also known to the ancient Greeks, dating back to the 7th century, where it represented mutual recognition of well-being and to recognize good deeds and charity. Christians also commonly used the pentagram to represent the five wounds of Jesus as he hung from the cross, not to mention its appearance throughout the ages of Wiccans and paganism. The pentagram in general was always used to represent good as opposed to evil, so the very fact it was shown as being inverted, along with the phrase welcome to hell, was a clear indication that Venom were opposing traditional religion and the acceptance of God. The Sabbatic Goat or Baphomet only added fuel to the fire. Baphomet has become known as a deity that is strictly worshipped by the occult, so what more evidence would a good, law-abiding Christian need than to deem this record as satanic? And with songs titled Sons of Satan, Live Like an Angel, Die Like a Devil, and In League with Satan, 
It's safe to say this is probably the first metal band that purposefully wanted people to think they were actual devil worshippers. Welcome to Hell is most definitely one of the earliest examples of devil worship or Satanism being used as a shock factor in metal music. However, this record didn't exactly top charts around the globe. There was another catalyst that helped to thrust Satanism in metal into the heart of Middle America. On November the 1st, 1980, a Canadian psychiatrist, Lawrence Pazda, published a book called Michelle Remembers. The book outlines therapy sessions carried out on a woman named Michelle Smith. The book details how, under hypnosis, Michelle regressed back to a five-year-old version of herself and, over the course of 600 total hours of therapy, recounted how she was a victim of satanic ritual abuse at the hands of her mother and several other members of a satanic cult during the mid-50s. Pazda states that some of these recovered memories involved a worldwide secret satanic organization where one ritual even summoned Satan himself, but then Jesus somehow intervened to save his patient. Not surprisingly, the book has long since been discredited. However, this spurred an alarming wave of satanic ritual abuse cases being reported to authorities in what became known as Satanic Panic. The Satanic Panic was a nationwide phenomenon where throughout the 80s, over 12,000 unsubstantiated cases of Satanic ritual abuse were reported to authorities as a result of the book Michelle Remembers being published. At the height of the panic, it was alleged that a global Satanic cult that includes the wealthy and elite in which children are abducted were behind this evil conspiracy. This strange wave of alleged satanic ritual abuse cases brought together many different peoples of the United States to tackle the issue, and soon a small group of concerned housewives would turn their attention to rock and metal music. In 1983, four wives with strong political connections to the government in Washington, D.C. formed a committee called the PMRC. Tipper Gore, wife of former Vice President Al Gore, was a co-founder. The Parents Music Resource Center decided to draw up a list of songs that they deemed to be harmful towards the youth of America. Amongst the offending artists were Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, Motley Crue, and Venom, amongst others. While some of this music was simply accused of promoting violence, drug use, or sex, two songs were directly identified as having links with the occult, Possessed by Venom and Into the Coven by Merciful Fate. This subsequently put every metal band in the firing line of religious organizations and parents across America. When you see Slayer and Venom emerge in the 80s using an inverted pentagram as their logo or album artwork, it's easy to understand why thrash was seen as an initial catalyst for Satanism in heavy metal. But it quickly became far more widespread. Then you have a band like Motley Crue come along, not only using pentagrams and occult symbolism in their general imagery, but they also had a fan club called The Sin Club. Now, of course, Motley Crue wasn't a thrash band. However, they were one of the earliest heavy metal bands that were purposefully using Satanism to their advantage from a marketing point of view, and their record Shout at the Devil reached number 17 in the US Billboard charts, essentially making them somewhat of a household name across America. In response to comments about the album from the PMRC, Motley Crue claimed that it was an anti-satanic album. We were telling these religious fanatics, read this, shout at the devil, not shout with the devil. And singer Vince Neil even claimed the pentagram on the album cover was actually a form of protection from evil. However, this fell on deaf ears when it came to the PMRC and parents across America as the imagery these bands were using was far louder than the music. In 
if we actually look back at the general history of Satanism in heavy metal music, we can see that for the most part, it was merely the imagination of the average person that subjectively imposed the concept of devil worship into various metal genres. The first heavy metal band, Black Sabbath, were even shocked when Satanists, witches, and practitioners of the occult started attending their shows. They certainly were not sacrificing people on stage marked with inverted pentagrams to appease Lucifer. Black Sabbath were, however, a catalyst of change for an entire generation when it came to teen culture. They were simply seen as a threat to modern society, to the previous generation, based on just their music. But this is a natural occurrence that happens with almost every generational shift, especially in the music industry. And whilst groups such as the PMRC try to label some artists as satanic or having links with the occult, their goal was simply to censor the lyrical content from the youth of America, which ultimately led to nothing more than the introduction of the parental guidance sticker on records. And if anything, the PMRC trials ended up being the most effective marketing campaign to promote heavy metal in the history of music. There is actually very little evidence that any bands from this era were actively worshipping Satan or practicing the occult. The closest thing to an onstage sacrifice we ever saw was Ozzy Osbourne biting the head off of a bat, and he only did that because he thought it was fake. Although we do still see a continuation of Satanism in metal music throughout the 90s and into the 2000s, religious groups have targeted shock rocker Marilyn Manson pretty much from the start of his career, deeming him to be a Satanist, protesting his concerts and even forcing him to cancel a tour in the late 90s in response to the release of his 1996 record Antichrist Superstar. Manson though, like his predecessors, also confirmed he had no interest in worshipping the devil. Now, the history of Norwegian black metal and bands like Mayhem is something that could definitely be labelled as satanic, but that's a story for another day. So the questions we really have to ask ourselves are, has the devil simply been nothing more than a figment of our imagination? Did we, the people, project Lucifer into heavy metal music from the start? Or is this exactly what Satan wanted us to believe? all along.